Welcome back to the No Referees Podcast. I'm your host, Everest Akajobi. We're joined, joined today by some special guests on a special edition quarantine podcast. Uh, you can find us everywhere on social media at No Referees Pod, and you can find us on our new YouTube channel at No Referees Podcast. Join alongside with me today, my co-host, Special Jennings. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good, good to see you. We got a special, special guest today, the head coach of the George Washington Colonial men's basketball team, my brother from another mother. I've been knowing him since he had his received hairline when it was right there. <laughs> you, can, you can find him on Twitter at Jamie and Christian and on IG at Jamie and underscore Christian. My man, head coach, Jamie and Christian. What's up, brother? What's up, man? It's, uh, it's good to be on here, man. We've had quite a journey following you all around the world, and uh, it's good to be on here with you, able to catch up. Yeah, man, I, I seem like Buck Dale. What up? That was uh, 2006 when we met, you know, almost 15 <laughs> years ago. I know. I was, I was ordering sandwiches and uh, mopping up the floor and doing all those things, running around. And, uh, you know, it's just great for my learning, man, my development there. Um, I don't know about you, but I keep up with all those folks from Bucknell. Um, just a great group of people, great group of coaches, and I uh, just learned a lot, man. Yeah, great, man. So I've watched your development over the years, too, as well. And I've just been seeing your trajectory just go up and up and up. Yeah, you know, um, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, I think I've been fortunate to work with so many great people from Bucknell, uh, able to go, to go to William & Mary as an assistant, from there to VCU, and then I, then I became a head coach at Mount St. Mary, Siena, and then now towards Washington. So I've just been fortunate to be in a lot of great places, and I meet a lot of guys like yourself along the way that have really helped along the journey and, and, and helped make me a better better coach and better person. So, Coach, uh, right now we got this coronavirus situation going on. Pretty much all the student athletes around the country are home working remotely. Coaches are working remotely. You know, what have you been doing with your team these days during this coronavirus situation to stay engaged with them? Yeah, you know, uh, I think the first thing was, uh, you know, I think every situation when it's presented, I think it's important just to take a deep breath and assess it. Um, you know, obviously everyone kind of went to online learning at the, at, at the last seconds. So I wanted to let our guys kind of get settled into that. So I gave them about a week to 10 days to kind of settle into their online learning with their professors. Um, you know, we had professors trying to figure out how to use their Zoom, how to figure out how to do online stuff. Um, we had our players trying to figure that out as well. So I know everyone's kind of giving them a ton of information right at the beginning. I, I kind of took the, the opposite approach and just wanted them to kind of settle into it for a week to 10 days. And then I wanted to ask them what they needed from us and what we could do better and what kind of challenges they were, they were seeing so that we could kind of go and circle back and try to help them um, in the other way. And so I kind of backed off of them with that for the first, you know, again, week to 10 days. And then now, you know, we're doing, we're doing pretty simple stuff. I mean, these guys are pretty, pretty high academic. They're working really stuff on their academic stuff. So what, the only thing we're doing with them basketball-wise, they get a podcast a week to listen to that they have to summarize and they get a, and, and we want them to study college basketball. So we're pulling, we pulled 10 of the best college basketball games of all time. And we let them um, basically watch the game and gives us their observations. And then on Sunday night, we discuss the game. Um, that's all we're really doing with them um, basketball wise. Any stuff they do on their workouts, they're working with our athletic trainer and all that stuff. And our strength coach to do that stuff. Um, but I just really want to, I want them to, to be able to take a deep breath, do what they need to do, keep their priorities on, on their academic stuff right now, and just get a little bit better at the basketball mental piece. Coach, can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so just being kind of along the same lines, you said listening to podcasts. What, what, is it, what are you guys listening to? What, what, yeah, what, so, what podcasts? You know, one of the first ones was Michael Gervais. Um, Michael Gervais does a, obviously does an excellent podcast. Um, so we wanted, wanted him to, to, we want, so we, we use a bunch of those. I like a bunch of those. So, you know, we're pulling different ones. We're going to use Karch Karai is the one we're going to pull next week. Karch Karai, that podcast, Michael Gervais talks about, you know, Karch Karai is one of the best volleyball players in the world, but he talks about, you know, playing doubles and how he always wanted to teach his partner how to do something different so that that meant he didn't have to do that skill. Um, and so it's a really unselfish way. It's a guy who climbed his way all the way to the top of beach volleyball but still understood the importance of teamwork and understood that dynamic. So we'll listen to that one. That one's coming up for us. Um, David Goggins was the first one we gave him. Um, um, just an excellent um, ultra marathoner, I think they call him. He's done all kinds of races. And, um, you know, he's a guy who just has an unbelievable book, Can't Hurt Me. 
Um, but it's just unbelievable just to, to really listen to him, how he doesn't make any excuses with anything. No excuses with his body, no excuses with anything. And he really holds himself accountable to that. So I thought that was a good one for us to start out with. And we're going to continue to try to find different ones that I think are really good. Really trying to empower our staff in this time to listen and to give us things that are really good that they think our team will want to listen to and just want to get a little bit better at. Yeah, we're, we're kind of along the same lines. We are, um, you know, our young ladies, we're actually doing a team um, – team like kind of activity this Sunday with the whole you know watching the Michael Jordan uh, documentary and kind of going to discuss that I think that'll be pretty good for him but um, as far as the, the video component of it and and um, the workouts obviously are voluntary right now so just along the same lines right our young ladies are getting adjusted to the online um, classes which I think was different for a lot of them because we have we had five freshmen and so they had never done online schooling, and so so it was different, different. But I want to jump right into the basketball part, man. Tell me, what's tell me about this mayhem, this mayhem defense. I'm, I'm I keep hearing about it. I, you know, yeah. I, I don't know you from Adam. I'm, I'm happy to be <laughs> on here, kind of pick your brain a little bit. Let, let's talk about this mayhem. What's what does this consist of? Yeah, so mayhem is just our style of play. You know, we're gonna press and trap full forty minutes, pick you up on the end line, end line, um, try to put you in uncomfortable positions on the floor. Um, you know, it's just an exciting brand. You know, I think one of the things when people come to watch a basketball game, they want to see something they maybe haven't seen before. So we want to keep giving them these experiences when they come to a game. And, and uh, you know, we've used it at Mount St. Mary's. We've used it a little bit at Siena. We're building towards that here at GW. I just think there's something to, you know, when you score a basket, you picking that guy up right on the end line. I think there's just a, a mental component to it that I love. I love what it does to our team, how it gives it confidence. Because every game there's going to be a small stretch where you're going to get a layup, a steal, a layup, a steal. You know, and it just invigorates the crowd and puts you right back in the game. Um, I just hate sprinting back to half court and letting people bring the ball up the floor. I just feel like I'm, I'm losing every time they bring the ball up. And I just want to have that mentality with our team where we're just being super aggressive and, and being smart and playing connected. And then on the offensive end of the floor, you know, we take a ton of threes. You know, each, each just about every year I'm, I'm the head coach of a team. We're leading the league in three-pointers attempted and three-pointers made. Um, you know, so we're trying to – you know, this year we try to take 48% of our shots from three. I think we end up at about 44 um, so I'm looking forward to trying to get to 48 to 49% of our shots from three, just because I think it's such a weapon. And I think when you add that pressing component into it with the ability to make threes, I think it's just, it can become overwhelming for your opponents. And so I'm looking forward to really getting back to being able to do that here at GW and really attacking people for a full 40. What does practice consist of? To play like that, you have to be obviously in, in, in ridiculous amount of shape um, to play 40 minutes trapping and, and pressing up. What, what, is, what does practice consist of? Like what type of drills do you do? Like what, what, what does that consist of? Yeah, so, you know, the way we press, we only press for 12 minutes a day in practice. Um, you know, we have, set, we have about five drills that we like to do, whether it's, you know, pressing two on two to three on three to four on four to five on five with the buildup, we do that. Um, we do a drill we call triangle trap, where it's basically you have two guys behind the ball and everyone else is in front of the ball and you're trying to, trying to get a wolf from behind it on the dribble. Um, so a lot of things are kind of called recovery drills. So we have a bunch of those things. You know, we do, it's only about five drills a day, and we pick and choose between the five. It takes about 12 to 15 minutes, I would say. Um, and really, because if you're going to play that hard, you're going to be exhausted. And so we really want them to be able to learn how to play that way and play, play that hard. Um, and so we'll do that. And we'll, what we really focus a lot on is just how we practice in general outside the pressing component of it, quick transitions from one end to the other all the time, um, just encouraging the energy and the sprinting ability it takes from one end of the floor to change. So we're constantly trying to change into the floor as we change drills, as we're trying to build in conditioning. You know, my dad, my, my father is a track and field coach in Virginia. He's got two state championships. And one of the things he always felt like was, you know, you, you go to basketball and you always run everyone when they don't perform well. And he felt like, well, how are you going to encourage the guys to run if you're always using it as a form of discipline? Um, so when you watch us practice, we really don't run for discipline ever. The NCAA doesn't let you do it now anyway, but we've never really done that. Um, because I've always felt like uh, I want our guys to run and enjoy running and, and, sp and spring away from guys. So we've just tried to incorporate it in practice with how we want to change ends to ends and, and stuff like that with our conditioning and just encourage them to get it there. It's amazing what the power of the whistle can be. You know, we're changing ends from shell drill to an offensive drill on the other side of the floor, blow the whistle, they transition. Maybe they sprint 75%, blow the whistle again, they got to sprint back and come back. You know, you can add those components in there that are going to add conditioning into it and, and and allow them to kind of transition quickly. Okay, so what is, so teams, uh, I guess the stigma is teams that press don't like to be pressed or don't like to be pressured and things like that. 
um, offensively, you know, what is practice like um, on the offensive end? Yeah, we spent a ton of time on offense. Uh, I, I love offense. We're going probably 65 to 75% of practice on offense. Um, you know, every drill we do in the half court where we do a half court offense, we're going to shoot. And then everyone in that drill is going to get a shot up. Um, I just want as many shots through drills as possible. We usually split up, you know, we'll go in the end some just to work on some positional stuff, you know, point guards, wings, and, and, and post. They'll go about five minutes. Then we'll bring every. Then we'll bring the wings and the post guys together. Then we'll bring the points and the wings together. We kind of have this transitional period we started doing last year. Um, what we're trying to do, you know, try, a big thing is right now. It's like you have your static teaching, right? So your static teaching is, you know, spot jumpers, right? So over and over again, same repetition. You're doing that over and over again. We're trying to trying to move towards more. You need static for repetition. We're trying to move more towards active learning. So let's say a guy comes off the ball screen. You know, if you have a coach with a pad. If he puts up one finger, he's making a pass to this guy. If he puts up two fingers, he's making a pass to this guy. So we're calling that more active learning so that you don't, where you start at, you don't know where you're going to finish at. And I think that's important as we make that transition. I think we need static learning. I think static learning builds in repetition. It builds in habits. So there's important to do that. But I'm really trying to find that balance of how we can build in that active learning as they're moving, they're thinking, they're reacting. Um, and so when we go at the beginning of the guard forward breakdown, the guards will be very static learning as we're trying to work on reps, in and outs, ball screens, splits, stuff like that. As we move in more people, we're trying to go to more active learning and allow them to kind of think through the drill more. And then everyone there has got to be able to react and think it through. I got a question for you going back to something you mentioned a minute ago with experiences. This first year at GW, you had a ton of cool experiences from buzzer beater shots, Overtime, uh, four four overtimes. I mean, you had Sway Lee at a game. I mean, y'all were just out there, you know, put GW on the map this first year. You yeah. know, what can you talk talk about just your first year, all those experiences, and how you're just going to build upon, you know, the stuff from this year, the stuff you talked about in practice, and you know, building upon the future. Well, you know, we have one of the youngest coaching staffs in the country. Um, you know, I'm 37 years old. Our staff's all, all younger than me. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really, you know, we're really young and excited here. And I think that's what you need to transition our program where we want to go to. We want to be one of the top programs in the A-10. If you want to be one of the top programs in the A-10, you're one of the top programs in the country. Um, that's generally how it is when you're in a great league like that. So, you know, I've, I'm really lucky here. I have a great marketing staff. Our marketing staff here is unbelievable. Um, the ideas they come up with, I mean, they're just, they're always thinking outside the box. Our, our social media is better than any place I've been and one of the best in the country, the ideas that they come up with. Um, so it's great because like, I'm about being inventive and letting them do new things. And, 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 and it's great. It's, it works together as a great relationship because we're, we're all kind of constantly thinking, what can we do differently? What can we do better? Um, so I've got a great supportive team here that I get a chance to work with that does a ton of that stuff. You know, like Sway Lee coming to the game, you know, we had Sway Lee at a game, we had a protest at a game. Um, and, and how, we had, I mean, how, how did y'all get Sway Lee at a game though? Like when they roll oh, up, one of my favorite players, Armel Paul, his like, brother is Sway Lee's manager. So, you know, so when they came to DC for a concert, Sway Lee wanted to come play pickup the night before the game. So he came in to play pickup with a bunch of guys night for the game. And then the next night he wanted to come to the game. So, um, but you know, that's what happens when you're in DC, you know, when you're in the world's most powerful city and, you know, we have all these connections with the wizards and the Nats and, and um, the different venues, I mean, it, the, I mean any, anything's possible here. You know, like one day I'm walking around campus, and I mean, I, mean I, don't know, I don't know what campus where this can happen. One day I was walking around campus, and I walked past Bernie Sanders. I walked two more blocks, and there's Dikembe Mutombo. Like, where, what campus where this can happen, where the, the two, two people that are not connected or are both celebrities are just both walking around campus. And, you know, we have that being here in the heart of D.C., um, a place that, that D.C. has always looked to for, for knowledge and education. It's just a different place. It's a different world. And, and so I'm trying to do the best job I can and trying to embrace it all and try to bring it all into our, into our program. You know, like the amount of politicians that come to our games, um, it's, just, it's just different. I mean, it's a different place. And you know, it's we amazing. We're going to see Jamie Christian for a president, huh? You know, you never know. You know, I, you know I'm always, always trying to find out what the next thing is, you know. But, you know, it's great to be around a bunch of, bunch of people here that understand the world and have a passion for changing being that you are in one of the, you know, a very great city and, and he's like you said, one of the most powerful um, type of kids that you recruit. Um, I always go back, trying to go back to playing style and, and the way you play. Um, you know, what, what type of kids do you go after? You know, how, how does your recruitment process work? Yeah, well, I want, I want kids that want to change the world. And I want kids that want to change college basketball. 
Um, you know, that's where it starts at. I want great ambition. I think the tasks we have ahead of us, you know, you need those who have great ambition that, that, that have big dreams and that have the will willingness to work to achieve those dreams. Um, GW is a great place for that because, you know, when you look at the history of our basketball program, you look at the history of our university, you know, if you want to be elite, this is the place where you come up to be elite. You know, you talk about iron sharpens iron. The people that our students are beside in class and the things they're going to do and the things they're going to achieve, um, again, will change the world. Um, so that's one of the things I love being here. Uh, number one, it starts with that. It just starts with that kind of approach. Um, as a player, you know, I love size. I love big. Like this year, we're going to be one of the biggest teams in the country. Um, I love that. I love being a little bit bigger at every position. Uh, I think, you know, if you can get guys that are a little bit bigger that can handle the ball enough, I think it gives you such, a, such an advantage uh, on the defensive and offensive end of the floor. And, and so we're, we're, gonna, we're always going to be one of the biggest teams. I love that. Um, we're always going to shoot a ton of threes. So, you know, I'm looking for guys 6'6 six, six to 6'9. Six, I can space the floor out. Mm -hmm. That can knock it down. You know, I think that gives you such a difference. When you think, think about it, if a guy's a 6'9 three man, he's going to get to 6'5 three man. He's already got that three inch reach, um, three, three inches difference in height. And if his long arms are long, he's, he's got three more inches there. You know, that's a six inch difference in that shot attempt right there. So we're always looking for that and trying to find those little margins where we keep getting better. And then I love having guys in the post that can score the ball one on one. You know, the guys that, are, that have the ability to develop. And one thing, great thing about being here, having a great graduate school, we can put together a slow plan to bring these guys along and help these guys improve. We can get them graduate school at the end of it. And it's one of the best graduate schools in the world. So, you know, guys typically want that. And so, you know, we talk about those wings, we talk about those posts. And then we've had great success with point guards. Um, you know, we've had two All-American point guards. We've had a freshman All-American point guard. We've had um, an honorable mention point guard when I was at Mount St. Mary's. So our point guards have always had a ton of freedom. I love recruiting guys there that can score the ball. And then we really work to teach them how to make the pass and the reads. Because I think, you know, when you get a guy at that point guard position coming off 40 or 50 ball screens a night that can score the ball, it just makes everybody better. And it makes people have to have to figure out how to guard. And I don't like pass first guards. You know, I've never, I've never taken one of those guys. It's not, not my thing. You know, I want a guy that's going to come down and set the tone. And, you know, you know, there's nothing better than if you get a, a one five switch and your point guard can make that big fall, you know, or hit a step back jumper or hit a three. There ain't nothing better than that. And that gives your team such momentum and, I always want to have a guard, you know, with the ball in his hands, has the ability to be able to do that. Well, I'm I'm, I'm familiar with that part of it. Um, <laughs> I can I can see why uh, your president, President Thomas. I said I, I was reading up when he said that you were you were very optimistic, um, and and what you know what you were going to do with the program and things like that. Um, are are you so? How 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 long is practice? How how like. You know, how do you how do you plan for practice? Yeah, but you know, obviously if you're gonna play fast, play hard, get up and down, things like that. Like you said, you use different drills. How do you how do you plan your practices? Yeah, we're gonna go I tell our guys we're ready to go two and a half hours every day. Uh, I think two and a half hours is a good number where we don't feel rushed. Um, you know, we're gonna get in what we need to get in. Um, the way I structure it essentially again, I really look at the ratio and so even on the practice plan, it's all in colors. Um, because I really want to make sure we're 65 to 75 percent on offense and everything else is on defense. So we're really trying to build that in. Um, you know, we, we're going to get a lot of shooting in because I think shooting is important. I think, you know, if a guy can make a 15 footer, or make an 18 footer, it just changes the game up. And a lot of times when you had a team that didn't maybe achieve as much as you wanted, it's because your shooting probably wasn't as good as it needed to be. And I think with defensively, if you can get your team to play hard and play together, you got a great chance. So, you know, it's kind of essentially what we do. We do about 35 to 40 minutes before we even stretch. Um, we'll come in. The first thing we'll do is we'll go over our 5 on 0 offense. You know, we'll spend 10 minutes on that 5 on 0 offense. We do, um, you know, we change our plays up per game, each game. So there's a lot of plays that kind of go in and out of there. And I want our team to be able to know how they're reading the defense and stuff. So, you know, we'll spend that first 10 minutes getting everybody moving around. If they're doing that right, they'll get a little slight sweat on. That's important. Then from there, we'll split up. We'll go end to end, let these guys kind of work on their shooting, work on their stuff with the guard forward stuff. Um, and then we'll come in and we actually do pressure inbounds every day because I feel like teams lose games because they don't get the ball into the right guys. Um, so we want to make sure our guys know where to get the ball to at the end of games. And then we'll go and we'll stretch at that point. So that's probably about 30 or 40 minutes into practice. And, and they've got a good sweat, and then we'll kind of stretch it out. And the only rule in stretching is you got to you got to talk the entire time. It doesn't matter what you talk about, but you got to be talking and bringing that energy and bringing that camaraderie to your team. Um, that's really the only rule in stretching. Um, and then from there, we'll go shell drill like, like most people do. Now, our shells are a little bit different. You know, we try to break our shells into actions that you're going to see through the course of the year. Um, you know, we'll work on those four to five different actions you'll see a ton of, um, like the Gonzaga action is a popular action right now. So learning how to guard that with that guard cutting through and that guy filling up in the corner. You know, so we see that during the year, not really 
you're, you're not surprised by that. You already know how to guard that. So we'll go from that that section there, and then we'll go we'll go into some kind of offensive execution, whether it's five on zero again, whether it's uh, four on zero, three on zero, breaking it down, um, and then we'll go into what we call a ball team progression, which is kind of our our bread and butter. It's it's everything we're trying to do our, with our ball screen stuff, how you make your reads, where you deliver the ball to, and then we'll go into our flow section, which is usually a breakdown. And flow is what you go into if you don't get what you want off the ball screen. So if you can't hit the roller, you can't hit the, the jumper behind, what do you do next? You know, so many people, when they run ball screen offense, they throw the ball back, they don't have a shot, they have to reset, throw the ball back out to the point guard to reset. We don't want to do that. We want to throw the ball and we want to keep that ball moving once we get the defense scrambling. Um, so we'll spend probably 10, 15 minutes working on the different ways we can flow in this stuff. Um, and then we'll go into press, 12 minutes there. Um, and then after press, we'll go into some sort of five on five in the half court or five on five in the full court. Um, and then we'll f f have free throws, and they'll, they'll conclude practice typically somewhere in there. So you don't even need a practice plan. You got that thing, remember, Rob? Right. That was just right. He just went went straight uh -huh. off the dome. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I did have a I did have a quick question though. When you said that each game you run something different, yeah. What do you mean by that? Like you 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 put in total new sets, or you yeah. hold on to something that you that you do from like how, how does that work? Yeah, so, you know, our whole offense is because we ball screen so much. I mean, we're, again, we're ball screening 50 to 60 times a night. Um, so it's all about where you want to tag from, how you want to tag, who we want to attack, who we want to put guys at. So most teams run spread ball screen, and that's all they run. We run spread ball screen. We run roller places. We run uh, pin downs off the ball screen. We run a bunch of different actions off of it. Um, and so each game, we basically look at how you want to defend, and then we're trying to attack how you defend in the base of your defense. If there's a weak defender that we can pick out, like, you know, every team has a guy that, that can't guard. So if we can find him more often, you know, we're going to be in a great spot. So we're always looking for that. Um, it's much more, it's done more like football. You know, I was at Bucknell. Um, I, I, my, my, uh, my housemate, my housemates were all football coaches. Um, one of them was an offensive coordinator. So we just spent a ton of time talking football. And that's really where we got it from, you know, really watching the film, adjusting to what the defense is going to give you. Because every defense is going to give you certain shots. Our job is to try to put our best players in those, in those spots and to take what they give you and be able to beat them with it. So I got a question, Coach, off the court. Because you've been talking for the last 20 minutes. I know you a coach. Y'all coaching. Y'all can talk all day, you know, about running, roll, replacing, pin down, flare screens, all that stuff. <laughs> but I want to know just something on the personal side. On a game day situation, you know, what do you do personally to prepare to make sure you're in the right state of mind to coach these guys up um, from the start of the day to the, the post-game speech? Yeah, I'm big on uh, meditation. Um, I'm going to spend – I'm going to have at least two, sex, two sessions a day meditating on game day, and I try to meditate every single day for at least five minutes. Our team also meditates every day. Um, we bring a mindfulness specialist in, a guy named Greg Graber. Shout out to um, my man, Greg Graber. Greg Graber teaches our guys how to meditate, different things to do, different practices. He, you know, he texts with the guys through the course of the year. Um, and then I spend a lot of time in meditation. I think it's just, you know, when I get on the, when I get on the court, I want to feel the emotions of the game. I want to feel what's going on. I want to feel the change in momentum. So I'm trying to put myself in a mental state that's almost like, you know, that's almost like just as connected with our players in the environment as possible. And so I just want to like basically detox my brain to be able to allow myself to be in that environment and to feel what's going on. Um, so I can make the, so I can be the, make the best decision. I think a lot of times um, you, as a coach, you want to kind of plan out every step of the way. And I think that's great because I think it does help you prepare, but we're, we're probably going to be judged more by the things we couldn't prepare than we are by the things that, that than we are by the, by the other things. And, you know, your, your big man gets in foul trouble. You got to make a decision. You know, do you feel confident enough to go to the bench if you have to go zone? Those are things we can kind of prepare for. Um, but I think when I meditate, I feel like I can handle the unexpected better and I can control my emotions. There's oftentimes in the games, I feel like we're, we're, we win the game because my emotions are more under control than the opposing coaches. Um, and so that's one of my major things. It's just trying to meditate and put myself in the right place. Um, you know, I, I watch film. I watch a ton of film, 18 hours of film for every game. Um, but on game day, I'm not watching any film. So I got to get all my film work done before then. Um, again, we're going to get all our stuff prepared to go into to shoot around and we'll be ready to go. But on that game day, it's really about me trying to make sure I'm in the right place to be, be the leader our team needs. Just knowing you personally and just knowing you over the years, a lot of the players are gravitate, gravitate towards you because you really give them like that sense of almost like big brother, 
like a, a father figure and you really wrap your arms around your kids. Can you talk a little bit about that just in your, your coaching style and you know, how you approach, approach everything off the court? Yeah. Well, I mean, I love them. I love our guys. Um, I love everything they're doing. Um, I, I love them. You know, I always say you either coach how you were coached, or you coach how you wanted to be coached. And I wanted to be coached in an environment where I felt, felt cared for. I felt loved. I had the freedom to make mistakes, but also held accountable for the mistakes that I made, that there was freedom to bounce back from those mistakes. And so that's the kind of environment that we're trying to create. You know, we're going to be highly competitive because we're competitive, but I think there's, I think you can be competitive and also be caring. You can be competitive and also be loving. You can be competitive and also hold people accountable. And I think sometimes in, in sport, we move competitiveness over top of some of those characteristics. And I think that's a mistake. So, you know, when our guys come out of the game, I stand right on the end line. So you got to walk through me to get to the bench. And you're, I'm going to hug you almost every time you come out of the game or say something positive to you. And I'm going to ask you questions because I want to know your input. And then that player is going to go down and touch everybody's hands all the way down and then all the way back when they sit down. Um, I just think that's really important, you know. Um, and I'm a former player. And I think once you're a hooper, you're always a hooper. And I think sometimes coaches forget that. They forget how hard the task is. Uh, I never want to lose, lose, lose that understanding how hard the task is. I want them to know I'm connected with them and I believe in them. I've been there, you know. So I know the bounce pass they threw away. They didn't mean to throw the bounce pass away, you know. And so I want to make sure they understand that. But I also want them to have the freedom to take chances. I mean, great players take huge chances. You know, how many point guards have we had to throw the ball, seemingly throw the ball all over the place, and then at some point they figure it out and they're making incredible passes. So I think in order to get some of the greatness sometimes, you've got to allow some of these mistakes to happen, especially when they're younger players. I just want them to always know that I have their back through whatever. You know, at the end of this, these guys graduate, these guys move on. There's going to be a moment in their life where something happens, and you want to be that person that they call when they need help. And they're going to look at their failures and know how you responded to that to be that person. And that's what I want to be for our team. You know, every day, you know, whether you play 35 minutes, you play zero minutes. I want to be that person for them that they know has their back no matter what. And that's going to always try to help them and be there for them. Um, there's no better platform than that than a competitive, uh, competitive game, you know, where people are emotions are sometimes high and low, just trying to be that consistent person for them. Now you kind of just took the question I had for you. I was just going to ask you, how do you motivate um, the ones that are not playing as much? Um, and kind of keep them engaged and keep them involved and keep them, you know, being a good teammate and, and staying the course. Yeah, that's always a challenge with every team. You know, when everybody's playing a ton of minutes, it's, it's easy for guys to kind of fit in or you're winning every game. It's easier, it's easier for guys to fit in. Um, you know, I think one thing we try to do is have a plan for everybody, right? So whether you're a freshman who's playing zero minutes or a junior who's playing, playing, playing a little minutes, just trying to have a plan for them and how they can improve. You know, for the most part, when players feel like you have a plan for them to improve, they can buy into that plan over, over top of their playing time for the most part, right? And so every day we're working on the skill, we're working on this opportunity. And then when that opportunity presents itself in a game, giving them that opportunity and letting them know that their failures in the past didn't, are not detriment to where they are today and to the future. Um, so I think that's really important. So we try to have a great plan for them. You know, we spend so much time, we do a leadership enhancement plan um, which is 12 to 15 different leadership seminars through the course of the year. Some of that we're using now with some of the podcasts and stuff like that we're doing now, um, where we just talk about team dynamics. You know, you'd be amazed at how many players just don't know how they're supposed to operate on a team. They just don't know. You know, they've been on different teams or coming from different backgrounds. So I think it's important for us to set the foundation for them. This is how we operate, and this is what we do here at GW, and really explain to them how that's different. Um, I think trying to consistently outline that I think is very important. Um, we try to do a great job of it. Again, it doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always hit home right away. I think it's about being persistent and patient with it. And so just trying to have a plan together and understand where a guy is today as a freshman, he may not be there as a, you know, he's not going to be there as a junior. If you keep saying the right things, I feel like it's a lot of, it's like being a parent, you know, you just keep saying the, saying the same thing over and over again. And eventually when it clicks, you got a great dynamic there. And, you know, for the most part though, you know, people don't want to be seen as selfish um, so when you're really helping them establish themselves, their identity within the game, and within their, your program, um, they're going to try to do that to the best of their ability uh, because they, they do care about their teammates and they are their friends and they do care about the outcome. Coach, I got a question for you. Talking about operating within the team, what are some of the things that your players will tell the GW fans watching that Coach Christian is funny when you 
tickle his underarm or coach Christian yeah. is laughs if you uh, bring him a Sprite, you know, what are some, a, a cool thing that some of your players could say, you know, that y'all are so connected that, you know, will be yeah. some kind of like a fun fact about you. Uh, they would say, I think number one, they'd say he's really competitive. <laughs> I think they would say that. Cause I think sometimes you can watch the game and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty calm and calm and cool during the game. I think they would say I'm competitive. Um, uh, I think they would say, um, I think they would say I was pretty, I was pretty funny, you know, or that, that I think I'm funny. I think they would say that, you know, <laughs> play with the corny coach jokes or corny dad jokes all the time. Um, um, I know they would definitely say that. Um, and I, I think they would, they would definitely like um, that my, my, my personality is different than what you might see every, what, than what, you, what you're expecting to see. And I think when you get behind closed doors, just trying to connect with those guys and sit with them, you know, I, it's always funny because I get guys that, uh, They'll, they'll be mad at me because I'll be hard, I'll be harder on practice one day, and they always come in the office and they and they, were, they sit down with me and I'm like the type of person where we're gonna operate one way on the floor and then off the floor you know your your play doesn't affect how I'm gonna treat you as a person. Um, that's really important for me and for our dynamic. So they'll come in they'll say you know I was so mad at you yesterday in practice and I sit in your office and I just think oh I just like this guy so much you know and I just felt like you know they'll just come in and we'll be talking about something on Netflix or something. You know, they'll definitely say I watch a lot of TV because they, they know I watch a lot of TV. Hey, so what what are you watching right now on Netflix, you know, during this coronavirus time? Like, what you binging yeah, on? You know, I just finished Ozark. Uh, I can't get into Ozark. It's a little too slow for me. Oh, it's so good. You know, be patient with it. Be patient with it. And he's the first person I've ever heard say that, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching, that's I'm watching uh, Money Heist right now. I'm hooked on that. Yeah, that's yeah, the one I that. Right next, Money Heist. And then uh, I just finished up on Prime, uh, The Fabulous Miss Maisel, which I think is really, really good, uh, really funny. Um, so, you know, I'm going to keep finding different things. I'm kind of on this comedy thing right now. I'm, at night, I'm kind of searching, you know, like I'm watching Chris Rock comedy, and I love how comedians deliver their, their punchlines. And obviously, a ton of Dave Chappelle on Netflix, um, Sticks and Stones. So it's, it's, it's all pretty funny. If your days running together, like, you know, it's this day, that day, not one day, Tuesday. No, you know, not really. Um, you know, um, you know, we, we had, we had a, we had a great, we had a big time project with our roster, um, with the recruits we're trying to bring in. Today's actually signing day. So it's a great day for our program. We took a big step forward in the last three weeks. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, you know, so we were locked in on that and you know how it is ever since you're recruiting and, 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 uh, you know, especially, you know, this too, when you're recruiting, you're just like, your, your head's down for as long as it takes to get the task done, especially with these transfers. So I always have been underwater for three weeks. So I'm finally starting to come up to, uh, to, to get some air and stuff. So, you know, not really, I mean, it's a great time for us working on some culture stuff. Um, that's a big project right now. It's just make sure with our staff and with our players, we're just building our culture and I'm, that I'm creating a plan that's strong enough for these guys to see it, understand it, and make it a big part of our vision. What are you all? Uh, what are you? What are you doing to work on that culture? Like, what what are what are some of the things that you do to kind of help generate and, and build your culture? Yeah. So right now, number one, I'm, I'm working working on me right now. So I'm I'm doing a ton of reading. Um, you know, I just I'm, I'm working on through this book, Principles by Ray Diallo, which is excellent. If you haven't read that, it's an excellent book. It's what was it called? Uh, Principles. Principles. Oh it, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's vast. But you know what I like to do with it? I, I like listened to the book already. Now I'm kind of rereading it and I'm reading it. Um, I'm, I'm keeping my note cards and I'm writing down a bunch of stuff they're talking about. And I'm just trying to build into that. I'm um, just trying to get better there. You know, being at GW for a year, I know I understand my climate here a little bit better and some of our challenges. So I'm trying to make sure that I've done a great job of, of accepting and understanding the things I need to understand there so we can be better. So I'm spending some time with that. Um, I just finished a book named uh, Motive by Patrick Lucioni, um, which is excellent. Um, he's also the author of Five Dysfunctions of a Team and, um, so those are all great books. So I'm kind of reading through those. So I'm in this headspace right now where I'm just trying to really build our, build our program up through, through my vision and being able to make sure I'm clarifying that for our team at a better level. But, you know, a lot of note taking right now and then just all the notes and all the reading, I'm turning that into documents that I can then share. Kind of similar to what we're doing. We're going on, you know, as a staff, we're going on year three um, rebuilding, which has been, um, in, in my opinion, one of the hardest things I've ever been a part of. Um, trying to change, switch gears, like you said, building the culture, getting the right kids in, um, things of that nature. What you know, when you first got to George Washington, I know that I, I believe they were nine and, and twenty-four or something of that nature, with four and fourteen in conference, um, things like that. Um, you, you know, what what is your plan? What is the goal? How how are you like mapping that out? 
Yeah, well, I think we can win a national championship here at DW. I think it's that unique of a place. I think it has some unique opportunities. I think the, the coach, and I, it, I hope it's me, figures out a way to, to capitalize on every single thing that this place has. I mean, again, Bernie Sanders, the Kimbe Mutombo in the same day, you know, these things are really unique. And so I think if we can do a great job of just – of just showcasing that to the world and not keeping it like a secret, but screaming it from the mountaintops. You know, I think if we do that, um, I think that will help. So that's our goal to, to I, I believe we're one of the best teams in the nation. Um, so the way we're going to do that though, is, is by, you know, bringing in the right kind of players and the right kind of people that can share that story. You know, a lot of things we're excited about with the recruiting class, we're bringing in these guys who have great communication skills. You know, there's a moment when you get to the state tournament, where you know, they bring you in and your coach, you know, your coach, you sit down, you have your name card in front of you, and they sit your players beside you and they have their name cards in front of them, where there's a there's gonna be this moment in our in our future, and I don't know when it'll be, hopefully it's this at the end of this year, right? Um, where they ask the players questions at first and then they ask the coaches. And I, I wanna dominate that moment when those guys have those, those cards in front of them. I want our players to dominate that moment. I want them to own the sound bites for the month of March how much they appreciate being at George, George Washington, how much they appreciate their teammates, how much they love playing for us. And so I have this vision where I think if I can get guys that can do that, communicate that, and are talented enough to make plays on the floor, that's going to be a big turning point in our, in our basketball future. Um, so that's something I've really been locked into is just bringing in guys that have the energy and the enthusiasm that people are going to want to watch play. You know, like this, to say, I'm going to turn from this game to this game. Why would you do that? If you love watching guys play and you love how they, how they play together. Um, and so that's, that's kind of my vision is trying to, trying to be able to build a group that has the ability to be able to do that. I know when we have the ability to do that, we're going to have something really, really special because then we're going to be able to sustain it and capitalize on it. And that's where you really find true greatness. Well, Coach, well, Coach, I just want to say, you know, we appreciate you coming on. And today being signing day, you know, uh, congratulations on getting those three transfers in. You know, your, your guys coming in, your, your incoming talent, you know, big, bright future for you. Uh, and the program, and we just want to say thank you for coming on No Referees podcast, sharing some stories, your culture, philosophies, uh, things of that nature. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate you having me. All right, Coach. Thank you. We appreciate it, man. Take care. Thanks, man.